Now, believe it or not, you've already been using Windows PowerShell commandlets. Commands like uh, CD, LS, DIR, copy, and CP are all commandlets. Well, all right, technically they're not. Technically they're aliases or nicknames to actual commandlets. Commandlets are written in a .NET framework language like C Sharp or VB.NET, and they're given to you bundled up in something called a PS snap-in. Now let's talk about aliases real quick. Aliases are just short names or, or nicknames for a commandlet. They're easier to type, and that's it. Well, they're also there to provide consistency with old-style command names like dir or ls or cd. A lot of aliases come built right in so that you have that kind of backward compatibility and you can create your own aliases. So if you find that you're using a particular commandlet and its name is getting just kind of tedious to type, no problem. Just make an alias and it'll be a little bit shorter. Those familiar DOS or Unix style commands I showed you are actually just aliases to Windows PowerShell commandlets. CD is an alias to set location. Both dir and ls are aliases to get child item. Copy is an alias to copy item, and del is an alias to remove item. Some of these commandlets have other aliases too, such as gci for get child item. It doesn't matter which alias you use, the command works exactly the same either way. And so aliases are why dir slash s doesn't work. See, dir is just an alias for a commandlet called get child item. And the alias only covers the commandlet name. It doesn't change the parameters that the commandlet uses. So get child item doesn't use slash s to recurse subdirectories. It uses a different one. So you could type dir dash recurse or dir dash r to recurse subdirectories. And that'll work because that's the parameter that get child item, the real underlying commandlet, is actually using. Let's take a look. Commandlets and aliases truly are the same thing. For example, if I run dir, I get a list of files and folders, but dir is just an alias, and running the real command, get child item, does the same thing. Of course, I rarely use the full command name because it's so long, but you can if you want to. This sameness between commandlets and aliases extends to just the commandlet name. In other words, Either the alias or the commandlet uses the same parameters. For example, dir with a path and the dash recurs option provides a recursed directory list. Providing the exact same parameters with get child item has the exact same effect. Here's another quick example. I'll change to the program files folder by using the cd alias. Now I'll change back to the root of the drive and change to the program files again. This time, though, I'll use the full set location commandlet name instead of the cd alias. And as you can see, it's no different when I use the commandlet name, except that it requires a lot more typing. Now, let's say you know the name of an alias and you want to find out what the actual commandlet is. Easy as pie. Just type help in the alias name. Help will look up the alias, find the commandlet that it points to, and then display the help for that commandlet, including the commandlet name, so that you'll know what it is from then on. I'll show you. You have a few ways to discover the full commandlet name for an alias that you already know. One way is to just run get alias with the alias name you're interested in, such as cd. You'll immediately see the underlying commandlet name. Of course, get alias is a lot of typing, so it also has an alias, gal, which can be used in the same way. You can also ask for help on an alias, such as help copy, and PowerShell will display help for the commandlet, including the commandlet name. So here's how to work with aliases. To get a list of all defined aliases, just run get alias, or you could run GAL, which is its alias, or you could get a directory of PowerShell's alias drive. And that's because PowerShell's own storage is exposed as a set of PS drives. So you actually have a drive called alias, and you get a directory of it, and that's all the aliases. To add a new alias, it's new alias. And to remove an alias, you use the remove item commandlet, which has an alias called del for delete, on the alias drive. Let's take a look at making an alias and see how that works. Let's make a new alias. I'm going to run new alias and tell it that my new alias name is show files. I'll make this alias point to the get child item commandlet. That's the same commandlet lurking in the scenes behind such well-known aliases as dir and ls, as well as gci. With that done, I can now run show files to get a directory listing. 
Okay, it's not a great alias since it requires almost as much typing as the commandlet name, so let's create a new one. New alias, and this time I'll just name it D. Notice that I don't need to specify a parameter name for new alias, provided I give it the parameters in the order that it expects them. Now I have a new alias and the shortest way ever to get a directory listing. Just type D and hit enter. PowerShell stands ready to help you find the commandlets you need. For example, to see a list of available commandlets, just run get command. You could also provide a partial command name and wildcards if you want. Imagine that you're getting a directory of command names and you'll have the right idea. You can also work with two useful parameters of get command. Use dash verb to list all commands that use a particular verb, or dash noun to list all commands that use a particular noun. Did you notice that about commandlet names? They all use a consistent verb singular noun naming format. Get service, not list services. Get process, not get processes, and so forth. Now, when it comes time to find a commandlet that you need, you have plenty of options. You can start by simply running get command to see all the commandlets that PowerShell has to offer, including any that you've added in. To be a bit more specific, you can use wildcards with a partial commandlet name. For example, GCM, uh, that's the alias for get command, by the way, star get star will get all the commands with the word get in them. You can also narrow down the commandlet list by specifying a noun or a verb. For example, this shows you all the commandlets that use the noun process, while this will show you a list of all commandlets that use the verb set. You can also use the help command, although be aware that this technically isn't showing you a list of commands, it's showing you a list of help topics. In this case, help topics that contain the phrase event log. I mention that distinction between because not all commandlets, mainly those provided by someone other than Microsoft, include help topics. So those commandlets wouldn't show up if you were simply using the help function to search. And commandlets don't come individually. Instead, they're bundled together in something called a snap-in, which is kind of similar to the snap-ins in the Microsoft Management Console. Each snap-in adds one or more commandlets, adding a whole range of capabilities to the shell. You can use the add ps snap-in commandlet to add more snap-ins, and you can see a list of loaded snap-ins by running get ps snap-in. If you want to see the commandlets associated with a particular snap-in, run get command dash ps snap-in and the name of the snap-in. Remember this technique. You'll need to use all of these later. Now again, you can see a list of available snap-ins by running get ps snap-in. This shows all snap-ins which are actually loaded into the shell and running. You'll notice that I have several installed, including several that come with Windows PowerShell and are loaded automatically. This listing does not include snap-ins which are present on my system, but not actually loaded into the shell at this time. To see the commandlets contained within a particular snap-in, run get command, followed by the dash ps snap-in parameter, and then the full name of the snap-in you're interested in. This is a good way to explore the commandlets that came from a particular snap-in. So it's all about consistency. These commandlet names might seem long, and, and that's why you have aliases, to shorten them up a little bit, but there's a reason they're long. See, that consistent verb-noun naming syntax means that you can guess which commandlets would, would be available for a particular task. If you wanted to create a new service, for example, you might guess that the commandlet name would be new service, and you'd be right. And see, this makes it easier to learn Windows PowerShell. So let's play a little game with a, a commandlet quiz. Okay, here's your quiz. What command, not alias, but the full commandlet name, would you use to get a list of commandlets that were available in the shell? What command would you use to get a list of running processes? What command will generate a list of services installed on your system? What command would you use to create a new alias? And finally, what command would you use to create a new service? Pause the video for a moment if you want while you find the answers. Get command will get a list of commandlets, while get process will get a list of processes. Get service gets a list of installed services. Are, are you starting to see the pattern and how these are named? New alias creates a new alias, and if you know that, then you might guess that new service creates a new service. This consistent naming not only helps you remember commandlets, 
but also helps you guess at new commands you didn't even know existed. Like the command line utilities you've probably used before, PowerShell commandlets support the use of parameters, which are used to customize the commandlet's behavior. For example, the getChildItem commandlet supports parameters such as dash path and dash recurse, which are used to control how the commandlet behaves and what it accomplishes. There are a few rules to remember about parameters. First is that they're fully documented in PowerShell's built-in help, so that you can always look them up. Second, parameter names are preceded by a dash, and a space separates the parameter name from its value. That's the pattern. Dash, parameter, space, value. Say it with me. Seriously, do it. Dash, parameter, space, value. Dash, parameter, space, value. You'll never wonder if it's a dash or a slash, and you'll never wonder if there's a colon before the value, because the pattern is always dash, parameter, space, value. And you don't have to type the entire parameter name either, just enough of it so that PowerShell can distinguish it from other parameters of that same commandlet. Finally, parameters which are defined as positional don't need the parameter name at all, just provide the values in correct order. I'll show you how to tell which is which. Learning to read PowerShell's help file is a key to using the shell more effectively. Here's the help for the get child item commandlet. Let's look at the first parameter, path. The entire parameter, including its value, is enclosed in square brackets, so we know that this entire parameter is optional. Within that, the name dash path is in square brackets too, so we know that this is a positional parameter. The parameter name itself isn't necessary. PowerShell will take the first value as belonging to the path parameter. We also see that the value needs to be a string of characters. Now look at the include parameter. The entire parameter is optional, but if you decide to use it, you have to provide a name. The parameter name isn't in square brackets by itself, so the parameter name isn't optional. If you do use it, you don't have to type include. Simply dash i or dash in might be enough to distinguish it from the rest of the parameters. In this way, we can really shorten the command line. Take this example. I can start by using an alias instead of the full commandlet name. I don't need to specify the name for the positional parameter, and on the next parameter, I don't need to type the full parameter name. The result is a much shorter command line, meaning you have to type less. Of course, this shorter line is less easy to read for a beginner, so you can always opt to use the full syntax to keep things clearer. Working with commandlets and their parameters is pretty straightforward, and you've seen several examples so far. Here's one more. I'll run GCI, which is an alias for get child item. In other words, the same thing as dir or ls. For the first parameter, path, I won't provide the parameter name. It's positional, and I don't need to. I'll just specify the value, c colon backslash. I am going to specify the dash filter parameter, name, and a value, autoexec.bat. I'll also specify the dash recurse parameter. Notice the pattern for working with parameters? Dash name, space value. Dash name, space value. Come on, one more time. Say it with me. Dash name, space value. I don't want you to wonder if parameters start with a slash or if you have to use a colon or something else between the parameter name and its value. If you just remember, dash name, space value, you'll always be correct. And keep in mind that Windows PowerShell is all about self-discovery. This isn't about reading giant books all the time. This isn't about memorizing everything. This is about letting PowerShell show you what you need. If you need to do something but don't know the commandlet name, look it up, ask for help, or use get command to find the available commands, browse through them, and find the one you want. Please pause this video now and follow the instructions in your lab guide to complete this lab. There are hints in the lab guide if you need them. And try to complete the lab without referring to the solution in your lab guide. When you're done, resume this video and I'll review a sample solution with you. Here are some sample solutions for lab 3-1. For task 1, I just ran help GCI. The help topic shows me that the GCI alias is really the get child item command. For task two, I created a new alias named D that is a shortcut to get child item. For task three, I first display a list of all loaded snap-ins using get ps snap-in. 
Then I pretty much made a guess. The snap in with management in its name looked like a good place to start, so I ran get command and asked for the commandlets only from that snap in. Reviewing the list, I found the one I was after. For task four, I ran start transcript and gave it a file name. To stop the transcript, I ran stop transcript. You needed to be a bit clever with asking for help or listing commands to find these on your own. And being able to find commandlets on your own is a big part of what PowerShell is all about. For task five, I simply ran calc to run Windows Calculator. That's all you need to do to run any external program. Just type the path and the file name, or in this case, just the file name, since the application resides in the system's search path. Next, I'll stop that process using the kill alias along with its dash name parameter. For task six, I ran get content to display the contents of a file named computers.txt. I also specified the total count parameter to just read the first 10 lines of the file. This is another case where using the help function in PowerShell can really help you figure out what you need to do. Task seven I accomplished with the get date commandlet. Using its display hint parameter to tell it I want a date display, not a date and a time. I found this commandlet by running get command star date star to look for any commandlets with the word date in their name. After I found get date, I asked for help to see what kind of options were available. Finally, for task eight, I searched for commandlets with the word event in their name and found get event log. A quick read of the help showed me how to specify my security event log and how to just grab the 20 newest entries.